Hi, everybody. This is Paul, as Renee just introduced me. I, uh, I'm always interested in, you know, the topic I can do for a group like this. I have 45 minutes, or actually, I guess, a little less than that now to get through everything. And I always like to try and provide some good information for you guys, but it's always kind of a challenge because it's a short time. And naturally, I think most of you understand, I, I, I can't or do not intend to uh, like teach the, the basics of technical analysis or, or that kind of thing in this short period of time. I am a, a wholly technical trader, and I am that way because I started out 18, 19 years ago. And after going through what most people do, trying everything out there, I came to realize that technical analysis was really the only way. And after using it for many, many years, I, instead of being 100% technical, I am now 110% technical. So I want to take today and answer three questions about technical analysis. And the reason I picked these are on a quick, you know, bang while I'm here, I want to try and get across what I think are some of the very, very important topics. And these are three of them that I think are things that could change what you do or how you do. I assume if you're here listening, you're looking for some, uh, some concepts, maybe to improve what you do. Maybe you're new looking to get into this. So here are the things I want to talk about. I'm going to get right to it here today. I, for those of you who, you know, want more information on things, you can uh, since just simply visit my website. I'm not going to give you any spiel on anything or, you know, I'm just, just here today to, to help you guys. There's my website. I'll refer to it a couple times. If you look to the left, you can click on things. I'm going to show you later. There are some additional resources that you can have for free on my website on the free stuff page. But for right now, here's what I want to talk about. Stop losses. And I put that right away. The, it was even on the titles uh, that went out to you guys in the email and on the site. The comments may not be what you think, because when people hear stop losses, you may think I'm about to give you the spiel about you'll lose as a trader if you don't follow stop losses. Well, I assume if you've been around the trading or investing game more than 10 minutes, you've already heard that 100 times. And I have actually quite a different take on it for you. And it's the first topic we'll start with. After that, I want to talk about when do you have an edge? There are only really two categories. And in a sense, the reason for all failure is because you're trying to trade or invest something without really having an edge. What would be the opposite of having an edge? Well, uh, flying by the seat of your pants, uh, just subjectively trading what you like and don't like. Those are the problems that usually kill most traders when they start. And finally, what makes a great setup? An interesting topic we'll talk about when I get there. So stop losses, number one. I'm going to jump right in here, and here is number one. Feel free if you have any questions. Since I'm limited on time when I ask for your answers to things, I'm probably not going to wait very long because I don't have the time for full answers. But those of you that are fast on the keyboard, I'd appreciate it if you give me some input when you can. Discussion points. These are the things I'm going to talk about. Two quick questions to bring out the issue. I feel that stop losses can be perhaps the biggest thing you do right that costs you money. I started talking about this many years ago, and in where I, the place is at when I started talking about it, I really couldn't even talk about it as I wanted to because it's such a taboo topic. And since I start talking about it, I see some other people do now occasionally, but I think this can be one of your greatest sources of pain is following stop losses. Now, before you start swearing at me in the text or saying other things, just wait till I get through with this and you'll, you'll see where I'm going. Two quick questions to bring out the issue and decide how much this affects you. What is the real purpose of stop losses and why many do it wrong? I just want to add this quick little burp. Something I started doing years and years ago and now makes me three times what it costs me, but no black swans. It is simply stupid to not do it if you are in the same situation. Some people have a, a black swan. What it means is whenever you give a statistic, if you just do a sample of 10 things, for example, and those 10 things turn out positive for you, but there was a possibility you could have had an infinite disaster, but it didn't come up. Well, that's a black swan. When I say I make three times what I lose, there's no black swan. There is no possibility it would suddenly all of a sudden take a, a hit to the worse other than just normal statistics. Here's the two quick questions. And here's a question for all of you. If some of you want to jump in on this answer, feel free. If not, I'll just go on kind of quick. But if you went back and looked at a few select days, like if I just said to you as a day trader, go back to May 23rd, go back to June 14th, and go back to last Tuesday, do you think you would have made more or less money if you didn't follow your stop losses? And if you're a swing trader, the same question just over your last three trades, four trades, five trades, would you have made more or less money? What do you think? Anybody have an answer for me? What I get... 80 plus, 90 plus percent of the time when I ask this question is people say, yeah, you know, and I went, if, if I didn't know off the top of my head, when I went back and looked, I found, hey, 
I actually would have made more money if I didn't follow my stop losses. And some of you, if you're confused, you may be saying, well, how could that be? Well, a lot of times your stop loss hits. When it hits, you take a full loss for that. You know, whatever money you're, you're risking. If, if you're risking $500 in a trade, you take a hit of $500. And then sometimes after it's stopping you out, uh, ironically, a lot of people say that the moment I got out, I should have been getting in. And the trade will rebound and come back and be positive for the rest of the day or maybe, maybe even hit your target. And... If you go back and look, sometimes you'll find, hey, you know what? Yeah, one time I maybe would have lost a few extra dollars, but the other three trades would have all been much more positive. I would have been better off not following them. So that's one question that you need to ask yourself. And there's a second question I want to ask you too, and that is if when you do stop out of a trade, when do you typically stop out? Do you stop out fairly soon after entry, like on the first or second or third bar, or do you stop out much later in the trade? When is it typical for you? to stop out. So that's, that's, that's the, the two questions that really make you start to ask yourself, should I do something about this? What is the purpose of a stop loss? Well, let me use this analogy for you to get where I'm going, if I can. I could ask you, do you have automobile insurance in your car? And say, yes, I do. If you live like I do in Florida, you don't have a choice. You have to have it. And I could ask you then, well, have you used it in the last five years? And the majority of you, I know some of you may not say it, but the majority of you would say, no, I never even used it. So I could say to you, well, wouldn't you have saved $10,000, $12,000, $15,000 if you never would have had car insurance, right? And the answer is, yeah, I would have saved that. But then you'd have to ask me, Paul, wait a minute, though. What if I do get in a car wreck? I have to, you know, fix my car. And worse than that, you know, if it was just the car being fixed, I don't think I'd even keep insurance in Florida because it's kind of expensive. But I may hurt somebody else and I may have hundreds of thousands of dollars of bills. So I can't go without insurance. Well, here's the analogy I want you to think of as it applies to trading. What if your car insurance you're using right now costs you $800 a month and it had a zero deductible, meaning if you scratch somebody and they want a $10 fix on something, you know, the, the insurance company pays for it. Very expensive insurance. But what if I told you you could lower your cost to $100 a month if you went up to a $1,000 deductible? And even if on the average month, let's say you had $100 of stuff you had to fork out of your own pocket, you're still paying $100 to $200 for that insurance rather than $800 a month because you're taking out insurance on just what you need. And that is the best analogy I could come up with to what I try to do in trading. Um, it's not difficult what I do. It's not super simple. It's, it's not like just a three word answer. It's something that I, I, I teach as part of what I do, but the results can be remarkable. And what I mean by that is this is where I said what I have come to do that I do something that will sometimes cost me more money and it sometimes makes me more money. And at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of whatever period of time, it makes me three times more than it loses. And if there's no black swans, there's not any discussion about what to do. So the only question really is, is this something that would, you know, help you? You, you would have to figure that out by really um, taking a test. And I'll talk about that in just a second. I'll give you an example of one just from yesterday. Now, this is not really the best example of what I would pick, but it was yesterday and it was pertinent, so I wanted to show you. Um, I, I had a profitable day yesterday. I had a good day today. Um, but yesterday would have been a home run day. I would have made half my week profit on one trade, which was Intel short. And I, this trade was my first trade. It was a full stop out, the only one of the week. And it ended up being a huge winner. It would have made 2.6 risk units, meaning, you know, if I risked 500 bucks, it would have made $1,300, et cetera. And instead I lost the full risk amount on it. And this is the type of thing where normally I wouldn't do something like this. And this was kind of a close call, so I'm not sure if I could have managed this properly, but managing stops and managing what you do throughout the day is an important thing and not just using the concept of just out of fear trading with just blind stops as I like to phrase it. Why so many do it so wrong? Well you're told from the first moment you enter the trading world, right? The first book you read, the first video you watch, the first webinar you attend. If you don't take your stops, you fail, you will fail, and you're a bad person and a bad trader, and right, that's what you hear from everything you've ever read. Of course, a lot of that is written by people who don't have a clue what they're talking about. It's amazing how much stuff, when you come into the trading and investing world, how much of it you hear that is actually quite wrong. Even some of the common cliches, some of the things that people start off basing their, their psychology and their trading plans on, they're just wrong. They're just dead wrong, and this really is one of them. Uh, being afraid of your stops and being afraid of a loss is the quickest way to be out of an account. 
whether you die a thousand paper cuts or whether you die all in one swoop, handling stops makes that difference and it's a very, very important topic to me. You do have to take stops and I'm not saying you don't. Uh, like I said, I would not drive without car insurance, but I wouldn't necessarily pay 10 times the price to have 10 times the coverage I need. And that is really a good analogy. And to really find out, I, I suggest you do this test and I would love if actually you would send the results to me if you, if you take it. But simply go back and look at, if you're a day trader, look at your last you know, 20 trades or look at your, your last, you know, whatever period of time you wanna look at. And just ask that question, just go back and say, what if I didn't stop out of any of these trades? What would have happened? Now, there's gonna be two answers. Number one, if you're new and you're just kind of not a good trader yet, well, you're gonna lose money no matter what you do, right? But I'm talking to the group of you that's probably a, a group of developing traders. You're doing pretty well. You're getting to know the charts. And most of your trades are kind of going in the right direction, but yet you're losing money or breaking every breaking even every month. If that's where you are, take a look at this. And you may be shocked to see that your stops are actually costing you a lot of money. A lot. I've seen people where their entire trading career was, in a sense, ruined because they were using stops improperly. And... By improperly, part of what I mean by that is that they set them super tight. Somehow somebody got the idea that tight stops is the way to trade. Well, if you're risking the same amount on every trade, a tight stops mean that you stop out a lot more often and you lose your full amount a lot more often. You start risking less amounts on trades that you don't like as much and you're completely out of control and you won't really have a chance. So this whole concept, to me, a lot about trading is about understanding the math, not that it's hard math, but understanding how to make all this balance and how to make it work. How is it that you can have trades that maybe would have lost a full amount and actually end up being partial losers or winners and yet still protect everything you do? And that's what you need to do. It's not hard to figure out, um, but it's something that I do as part of what I teach that, that takes uh, a period of time during the day. But to take this test, just go through and analyze what would happen on X number of trades if you didn't take your stops. Now you find out that you would have made a lot more money. You need to investigate doing that because it is simply a crime to have good trades and have them not work because you just got a little too sensitive, a little too tight. The concept of anything holding to a penny in today's world is almost silly. I think you know that between the volatility, between HFTs, and just the fact that thinking anything holds to a penny when you come to an area is crazy. I go back in time, I'm, I'm getting to be, <laughs> I still think of myself as so young, but I'm getting to be an old timer because I go back 19 years in trading. And back when I started, we traded in eighths and quarters and three eighths, meaning that if you hit your stop loss, a lot of stocks, the next level down was 25 cents lower. And I don't mean that was slippage. That's not slippage. That is the next level that you would hit on a, on a good exit, right? Money, hey, Money Tree, I know that name. Uh, you know, I, I, answering that question, it, it's obviously not a two-second answer. It, it's, it's part of the whole balancing act. And I, I, if I go into it now, I'm, I'm in, you know, if you want to email me or something, that'd be great. And I know you've been in other stuff, or maybe the next time I do my own presentation, we can talk about it more. But I, I'd like to get everybody the full benefit of this presentation, because that's just going to be a tough question to get hung up on, because it's obviously kind of a long answer. So that's number one topic is I want to at least make you aware. And again, I can't take the time to go through and, and teach you everything I know about stops, but I want to make you aware of what perhaps could be one of the biggest killers to traders that I know. And most people don't even talk about this, but you know, I have worked, I've, I've actually privately mentored 99 people and I have worked with hundreds of people through email and seeing trading plans and trading results. And I have to tell you, this is one of the biggest killers of traders. And yet people are afraid to talk about it. Because what do you mean? You, you have a stop, you must take your stop and you must take it to the penny and you must take it immediately or you will go to trader hell. And that's what people are taught. And that is one of the worst things that you could ever, could ever learn. So please find, figure it out for yourself if, if you never see me again and at least find out if your stops are really hurting you. But remember, you do have to have a stop because uh, nothing will kill you faster than having that one really bad trade that gets carried away. Let's go on to point number two, the second big issue I want to get across to you guys, if I can. When do you have an edge? When do you have an edge? Two discussion points. Is the market a random walk? And what are the edges? If you don't have an edge in trading, you got nothing. You got nothing. That's Florida talk. You got nothing.
Is the market a random walk? In other words, is the market nothing but a random, unpredictable action? No pattern, no odds. What do you guys think? Now they can see you typing. What do you think? Is the market a random walk? Is it just random, unpredictable action? What do you think? Yes or no? Quickly, quickly, quickly. I got to get through this stuff. Is it a random walk? One answer. <laughs> is it a random walk? Yes, no, yes, no. At least think about it. Uh, my answer may actually surprise you a little bit. My answer is actually, yes, it is. And understanding that is perhaps one of the most important things you can ever do. But I have a little qualifier there. It is most of the time, most of the time. Guys, listen to me. Again, I'm trying to give you some big, big topic issues that to me can change the way you look at things and change your, your trading investing career. Most people think that technical analysis is about looking at a chart and figuring out where it's going, right? That's what you've probably been taught. You're going to learn technical analysis, and from now on, when you look at a chart, you can tell me if it's going up, down, or what's going to happen, right? That's not the goal of technical analysis, I hate to tell you. Um, I, I, there are a few people, I think, anywhere that could challenge me on what I have to say about this, because I have sat and stared at charts every day for 19 years, just every day, looking at charts every single day. I know what's out there, I know what's been taught, I know what I teach, and I know what actually happens. The truth of it is, is that most of the time, most charts are a random walk. And the important thing is to understand that and realize that. The average chart you show me, the average chart you show me, I would look at it and say, I don't know where it's going. And you'd say, Paul, you're supposed to be the pro. Oh, yeah, I know, but I don't know where it's going. I could make some intelligent comments about it. I could say if this, then that, and I could say, well, it's more likely to do this than that, but I wouldn't put my money on it and take a trade on 97% of the charts you showed me. Does that make sense, everybody? And does that help you just turn a light bulb on what we're supposed to be doing here? We're not supposed to be figuring out every chart. What I want to do is I find those rare times where a chart jumps out at me and speaks to me and says, hey, I'm going higher and I can't hide it anymore. There's somebody buying me and because I'm being bought, I can't even hide it. There is no random activity. I'm being bought and it just can't be hidden. And these are the things we look for on charts. This is what I teach to look for. I call it the language of charts. And it tells you when there's something going on. And it happens, and this is when you do have this, you have a great opportunity, right? So most people, rather than looking for the great opportunity, that small percentage of the time, they're out there looking at the poor opportunities the majority of the time. Make sense? Where do I get 97%? Well, 97% comes from this. 97% is the fact that over 62% of all statistics are made up on the spot or just made up in somebody's head. No, seriously. I, it actually is a somewhat real number because when I scan a night, I scan about 1,000 charts every night. Well, just, just daily charts. I scan another three, four, five hundred intraday charts. But when I scan those those 1,000 charts, I, I end up with about, actually about 20. I'll, I said 30 to make things, but I end up with about 20 charts that I flag that are interesting to me. In other words, 970, 97% of the charts I look at, I don't even look at for more than half of a second. Just next chart and why? Because it's a random walk. I don't know what's going on. I want to find that chart where I can say, you know what? Boom, right there. If that goes to there, I'm buying it because I know there's a good chance it's going to go higher. So number two, if it's not a random walk, what is it? What are the two edges that I'm talking about? Here they are right here. These are the two edges. And basically anything you do, trading or investing, anything, I don't care if it's oil, cotton futures, commodities, the market itself, Qualcomm, Baidu, Facebook, I don't care what it is. You're doing one of these two things in some form or fashion. If not, you're trading random noise. Number one, trends. One of the few things that you learn correctly when you come to trading as a new person, whether it's page one of the trading book or the first minute of the video, one of the oddities is that this one thing you learn is correct and it's one of the few things you learn that stays correct and that is the trend is your friend. The issue here is what a trend is. I, I, I've seen, if I took 20 people and asked them on a stock if this is in a trend or not on some time frame, I, I'd get 20 different answers and I, I may not agree with any of them. So again, it kind of begs the question, I could say to you, trade trends and you I guarantee you'll be fine and you will but the question is my definition of a trend and yours may be grossly different my definition of a trend becomes very specific and people show me charts and say hey I went long just because of the uptrend I no terrible bad chart no good so if you understand what a trend is 
trading trends is really phenomenal because trends do not end very easily. The market on a, on a monthly chart has been an uptrend for almost 10 years. On a weekly chart, it's been in that uptrend, which is only challenged twice, even on a weekly chart in 10 years. Trends are incredible. You want to amaze somebody when you're arguing about a chart? Just say whatever trend it is will continue. You're going to be right most of the time. Number two, the other time when you have an edge is when there is no trend or if something ends the trend through shock value. Shock value is when something, boom, un, unpredicted, unbuilt into the chart, not built into the chart, all of a sudden happens. Types of shock value, some gaps create shock value. They're the best because they have the best trappage and the best shock value. Some wide range bars, that's WRB is a wide range bar, create shock value. The failures of wide range bars create shock values and any quality failure pattern. And there's any time you have a great setup um, that completely fails on a confirmed basis. All of these create great edges or great patterns to trade. And if you're a good trader, I'd be willing to, well, for sure, whatever you're doing is one of these things on the screen right here. If you're not, you're, you're, you could be trading random noise. You get some trades right, you get some wrong, you're not quite sure how to reproduce the results. All right, I'm on to number three. Unless you have any questions, please let me know. Number three is what makes a great setup? And boy, is that ever, is that ever a generic vague question, right? But it's supposed to be. I want you to think about something. The vast majority of traders fail at trading especially when you're new. That, that introductory level of trader has a tough time. I, I don't know what the stats are. You've heard the stats. I, I don't doubt they're true. I don't know what the number is, but it's tough. When I explain a proven constant, frequently somebody will say to me, hey, that's counterintuitive. Like, that doesn't make any sense. A lot of times I'll be long when the market breaks the low of the day, being bullish. How come can you do that? Well, because it works the vast majority of time. If I understand the setup, I know what I'm doing. But the point here in the slide is you put one and two together, it makes perfect sense. If you're new, your gut is wrong statistically almost all the time, right? If you're new, I mean, all of you that were new, when you were new, or if you're still new, your gut is wrong most of the time. You have to be thinking out of the box to some extent. Now, of course, that's a relative term because if you are designed to think out of the box, you're thinking in your box, but you have to think outside the box that most traders come to the market with. Looking at it from a broader perspective, from a pinpoint perspective, naturally a great setup is one that you have great confidence in and it comes from a great understanding of the charts, not fundamentals, nor based on your understanding of news, earnings, the economy. I don't even want to have that conversation today. I've, I've had it in other events, um, but there, there, there's just nothing to talk about. Th these things are not the basis for trading, investing properly at all. Great understanding of the charts is where your great setups come from, but Let's step back a minute and just talk about, because since I'm not going to do a three-day technical analysis class right here for you guys, what are we really talking by looking for a great setup? What does that mean? I want to talk about the quest to accomplish the finding of a great setup and talk about the things that have to be understood to even know what we mean by what a great setup is. I want you to think about some of the stuff here. Topics that have to be understood. Number one, the fallacies of reverse engineering. In other words, a lot of people try to look at other trades. I have on my, I type my site in up there. And if you, if you go look at my site, if you go to the free stuff page, I have a bunch of trade of the week videos, which people love to watch. I get comments on them all the time. Great stuff. Learned a lot. Well, I'm torn about putting them out there because of that comment that people say they learn a lot from them. Some people do. I think the vast majority of people probably get hurt watching them more than, than learning because they try to reverse engineer things. Now, Th these topics here, there's six topics here. I don't have time to go through these, and I knew I wouldn't have time to go through these. This is not like I'm saying, oh, gee, I ran out of time. I'm going to talk about one of these topics, but for the rest of them, um, I have a, um, a video that I did fairly recently that you can, if, if this topic interests you, and when I don't, don't, if you go to the free stuff page, and if you go down to where it says um, prior events and go to the one called Great Setup, I talk about a lot of the stuff in there, including more details about why reverse engineering never works for people, and, and yet people try and do it because, hey, it's, 
let's face it, nobody wants to try and take a lot of time to figure this out or pay a lot of money to figure it out. I didn't want to. I remember years and years ago, I have my own story that I avoided taking class for, for six months. Um, it's natural. And I, you know, I applaud anyone for doing that. But the day for most people comes where you decide, hey, I want to figure this out and I need some help. But reverse engineering is, is one of the worst things you can do because it simply doesn't work in trading. Um, back testing, the concept of back testing a trading strategy is worthless. Now, I know some of you are going to want to yell at me on the screen. That's, that's fine. I, I hope you're making a lot of money doing it because the concept of backtesting is, is, is worthless for the most part. There's a backtesting you should do, but it involves backtesting your own trades and your management and your your strategic opportunities. But that's a lot different than randomly backtesting strategies. It, it simply doesn't work. If it did, you know what? I would backtest every strategy I have. I throw out all the ones that don't work and I use the one that works. Doesn't happen. There, there is no such thing as a subject, as a totally objective trading system that works. There's only trading methods that involve some, objective, some subjectivity. Keep it simple. Again, this is another long discussion. It's not the one I'm going to go into. I'm going to go into the, the, the last one there, number six. But keeping it simple is a funny discussion. I believe in keeping it simple. But simple is a very relative term. And I believe that before you keep things simple, you have to understand everything about something before you boil it down to being simple. Does, does that make sense? So I like to keep it simple, but simple only comes when you know everything involved. And to some people that may mean you have to learn the complex before you boil it down to the simple, and maybe it does. And the other issue is, you know, it's funny, I've, just a quick story. is somebody that, you know, was, was, was hanging out in my room, and he emailed me, he's looking for help, and he's having a hard time. And when I tried to teach him a few things, he said, oh, Paul, that's so complicated. Why don't you keep it simple? So, so here's a guy that's losing, and he's continuing losing. He's criticizing me for not being more simple. Well, maybe that's why you're losing. Maybe because you're trying to make everything a little too simple. For example, cookie cutter patterns, head and shoulders, rising wedges, falling wedges, um, triangles, all of this stuff. You know what? It's not wrong per se. It's just so woefully incomplete that you cannot make money from them. And I don't know, you can, you can show me, you can you probably, somebody's probably going to probably email me a chart saying, oh, Paul, you're wrong because head and shoulders worked. Well, of course it did. You can show me, show me lots of patterns where they work. But the problem is you have to identify every time it happened and then identify all the times it didn't work. And you know what? You're going to find there's no odds to these patterns at all. They're, they're great theoretical concepts, but you won't make money from them because they're way too generic, way too vague. And even when I have somebody who really, you know, uses these or swears by them, I'll show them one that's not, that, that's, that didn't work. And they'll say, well, I wouldn't have taken them when I say why. And they, they can't answer me. The answer is because, well, it didn't work. But okay, how do you know that in real time? There's no strategic concept surrounding it. It's just simply, hey, here's, here's a picture of something, go do it. In general, the search for the Holy Grail, it hurts traders a lot. Yeah, right. Simple doesn't mean easy necessarily. Correct. Correct. <laughs> yes. Con counterintuitive is funny because, right, it's relative. You know, what, what's counterintuitive to most people is what's intuitive to me at this point. But it's, it is true that what most people think works is simply doesn't. And that's why so many people fail at this initially. The search for the Holy Grail is probably one of the biggest things that, that prolongs traders' swimming in mediocrity or failure or long waiting time before they're successful or you want to recall that and what i mean by that is trying to find any shortcut other than just learning what you have to know to trade successfully technically any shortcut you try and find it's just not going to work there are no tech guys there are no technical indicators that make you money there are some that find Patterns like in a scanning system, they can they can throw a bunch of symbols to you that you can look at. Uh, there's some that'll keep you out of trades, but nothing. You can't just say, "Here's my technical indicator. I'll trade this." It's not going to work. I guarantee you, it is not going to work. Finally, the search for perfect patterns. That's the one I want to, you know, take the time to dive in. And again, the rest of these, if if, if you look at the video I have recorded, you can get some answers to some of those if you're if you're um, intrigued. And I have other past events there you can read also you can listen to also if you like some of them but i want to get into this last one for the with the last seven or eight minutes i have here and, and that is the search for perfect patterns the search for perfect patterns 
it is a common thing that a lot of people will say, a lot of instructors will say, a lot of people, and it's a good comment in some ways, look for perfect patterns. Just trade perfect patterns. Okay, just trade perfect patterns. Oh, I'm sorry, this slide is reminding you. Here, I, I thought I had a slide in here for this. For discussion on the rest of these topics, you can go see under prior events, great setup, and at the free stuff page on the DTS website. Okay, but perfect patterns, things to consider. See, a lot of times the answer for some people is to say, well, I'm only going to trade perfect patterns. Okay, well, number one, you have to know what a perfect pattern is. Okay, I'm not sure I know what a perfect pattern is. I know what I like, and I know what works. I'm not sure, though. Look at number one. Couldn't two great traders disagree about what a perfect pattern is? Isn't that true, everybody? Can't you imagine that? I mean, I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure maybe you are a great trader, and you argue with somebody else about stuff. Or you, you, Isn't it true that two great people, two great traders could disagree? And that more than implies. <laughs> it's, yeah, the problem is it's perfect as long as it works, Money Tree, but you don't know it works till after the fact, right? If you wanted me to go back and, and, and trade today and you gave me the charts right now and you said go back to this morning, I'd do pretty well. Most people would. But we have to trade in real time is the problem. And what's what's perfect, of course, can be difficult. If, if two people disagree, if two great traders disagree what perfect even is, doesn't that imply that there's a lot of subjectivity? And there is. And even if you've decided for yourself what perfect is, what if it doesn't occur often enough for you to make your living? What do you do? What, what do you do? Perfect pattern is subject to change. Um, well, I don't like the word subject to change, but there is subject, subjectivity involved. There is some subjectivity involved. There is, right? But here's what I want you to think about. It's not, you have to define what it is you want to look for and get familiar with it. But it's dealing with all, great trading to me is dealing with all the non-perfect patterns we have to deal with, right? Does that make sense to some of you? Being a great trader Right. Well, Hans, that kind of is, is, is exactly what I'm saying, right? Being a great trader is not pretending you're going to trade only perfect patterns. It's dealing with what we have to deal with every day and the fact that not things are, are never really perfect. Nothing. Even your perfect pattern is not perfect. Nothing's perfect. And we have to focus on making money, not being right. There are many ways to make money trading. I'm not one of these people that says, hey, here's the way I do it and any other way is stupid. There are millions of ways to make money in the market. And I know, I know. In, in one sense, you're going to say, "Well, you know, buy low and sell high." Yeah, I, I get it. But I mean, there's a different variety of setups that all work. They're all they're all great. And I think one of the biggest things I can impart to you is that great trading is not about being right. And I know some of you, if you're newer, you may listen to that and say, "Boy, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard." But actually, I'm not in bad company because I don't know. I don't know, honestly, I've been around so long, I don't know if I got this from him or if coincidentally he said it later, but um, this is a famous quote from Mark Douglas. Google it. Mark Douglas says exactly this. You know, one of the most um, you know respected traders out there and you know he's written many books. It's not about being right, and it's not. It's, it's what I call a moment in time trading. It's when you have the setup that's in this perfect area uh, that gives you some odds that you know where it's going and a great reward to risk. And you hit the button. It's not about being right. You, you could, you know, sometimes I may short something and it turns out to go the other way by a mile. And somebody could come in and laugh at me if they wanted to say, boy, are you an idiot? You thought that was a short and it was a long. I'd say, who cares? You know what I lost? I lost the same that I would have lost if it was a perfect pattern and I stopped out by a penny. Isn't that true, everyone? If you're wrong, you're wrong. doesn't really matter. I'm going to lose X amount. And for me, it's X plus or minus a certain amount, right? But then again, when I get it right, you're going to make a lot more than you lose on balance. And that is what it is, guys. It's about making money. It's not about being right. And it's hard for a lot of people to get over that because one of the biggest difficulties people have is what really makes trading difficult is that fear that we all have. And it's the fear of being a loser, right? It's that fear of being a loser. And there are so many cool things you can do from a understanding setup perspective, from a management of entries and a management of stops perspective that can just revolutionize the way you think. Uh, you would not believe how much information is out there that the average person doesn't know. When people study with me, when they're every class they take, I get, I had no idea I could learn so much. I was just blown away. So it's stuff that 
you need to consider. And I know the vast majority of you are, you know, you're interested or you're just starting trading or you're you're trying to get, you know, your, your thoughts together and you're going to go out and do it. And, and I have a ton of information for you guys. As a matter of fact, here, this is what the last slide is for you guys. I have a ton of information for you available on my free stuff page. I, I help teach people all that I can. And there's only one thing, you know, there's there's a seminar program I teach. And if you're in that, you never, ever, ever pay for anything else. It's, it's just, it's very affordable and it's, and I give everything else. I, I come and I try and help people all that I can. But the actual learning and technical analysis is a, a very detailed process. And I think it's something that you have to devote the time when you're ready. And I encourage people, if you think I'm blowing any smoke, I want you to go to my website on the homepage and go down to something that I titled warning. That warning I put on the site um, day one. It was day one. As a matter of fact, I'm just coming on one year, by the way, just one year of DTS. And I've never changed the wording. There's probably a couple of typos in there, but I wanted to leave it alone because that warning, I think, I don't know how I wrote that all of a sudden, but I just, I, I loved how I wrote it and I never changed it. And uh, it, it warns you about, you know, specifically, I don't want you to even try to get any kind of education until you're ready to commit to learning it because it's not a, you know, listen to a video for two hours and learn how to trade. That's not what it's about. It's not real hard. But nobody would try and do this as any other occupation. So um, that's what I've had for you today. My time is up. If you have any questions, I think I probably have a minute or two to, to answer them. Otherwise, I encourage you, my, my email is right up there. You see it, paul at disciplinetradingstrategies.com. And uh, feel free to email me. I, I've even encouraged people to go ahead and send me, you know, trade trades that you've done that didn't work. If you need some let me, let me type my email here. If you need some help with simply, hey, why didn't this trade work type of thing? You know, I'd gladly take a look at it for you. If you send me, don't send me charts though. Please don't send me charts. Just send me the numbers, the, the, the time you entered, the number you en entered in, got out, et cetera. Just send me the necessary numbers. All right, anything else, guys? I think my time is up. I know Renee wants to get out of here and uh, we can all start our, our Tuesday night. So thanks, guys. Thank you very much. And a lot of great information for you. Come check out the free stuff at DTS and don't, don't do anything else until you're ready to do it, okay? Have a great evening, guys. Take care.